learn from it. Destiny arrives all the same. of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin is coming to a close. One event remains for the individuals. Thanks for being with us here today, everybody, at the Rogue Iron Game. I'm Sean Woodland with Annie Sakamoto. Dan Bailey is back. We just saw the teams tackle back-to-back -back events. Uh, they, they are done for the day. What's impressed you so far after these first three events? Well, I would say, of course, we knew CrossFit Mayhem Freedom would do very well today, but to see how well they did on the lifting was a huge surprise to me. I, I know they're strong. I know that, that Rich is obviously a great lifter, but to see them finish so well in that event, those other teams need to watch out. I think there were a lot of surprises for me. You know, I definitely had some picks that would have done a little bit better on the day, but the leaderboard seems pretty shaken up, except for maybe those two top spots. I think it's still anybody's game right now. Yeah, like you said, we know that Mayhem Freedom, they're going to be the overall leaders with 293 total points. The overall standing is still shaking up. If we get those fine lines, we will bring them to you. But OC3 Black, they didn't win event number one, but they got a second place finish, and man, they absolutely had to have that at that point. What did you like what you saw from them? Well, I like that. It was an event that favored them, and they capitalized on that. They're, they did great on the rope climbs, and we were talking about, you know, you really have to be coordinated in your effort on those rope climbs because you don't want anybody waiting at the top too long. But it was obviously the worm, something that they're known for that they always do really well at. Um, and that got, gave them a second place finish, which was great. They really needed that to hold themselves in this competition and they didn't do as well in the lifting. Uh, so they definitely moved themselves up a couple spots. I'm just hoping for their sake that it was enough. Yeah, we are cutting the team competition. We're going from 14 teams down to 11. Mayhem Freedom Hope, I'm sorry, not Mayhem Freedom, OC3 Black, hoping to be above that cut line so they can continue on. One team that is certainly above that cut line is Mayhem Freedom. We knew the first two events lined up pretty well for them, but what they did in event three was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're not the, the biggest lifting team. You wouldn't think of them as to hit the, the biggest lifts. They ended up taking second overall in that event. Obviously, they won the worm and rope climb event handedly, which gave them a whole lot of rest time before mm -hmm. they got to lift. So probably an advantage there, which they were able to capitalize on, take some more points. You see them all climb in there. This is something that they do daily. Rope climbs, the worm, this is basically their event to lose. Uh, came in, got the points where they needed to. You can see the worm staying in a perfectly straight line there. They're consistently in sync with everything that they do in terms of communication. And the leader, Rich Froning, there taking them across the line. Uh, again, we mentioned on the lifts, not where we thought they'd be. I thought they'd be a little bit lower or a chance for another one of the teams to capitalize and maybe gain some ground on them, but they didn't give up an inch. They didn't give anybody else an inch. Yeah, after two events, we're still tabulating scores through three for the teams, but after two, the Central B sat in second place. There were 42 points back at Mayhem Freedom, but we mentioned earlier in the day, look, you can make a legitimate case for any team to win this whole competition, and they are certainly one of them. We haven't talked a whole lot about them, but what makes them so good? Well, in my mind, what makes them so good is they were not on my radar, right? They were not the team that I would have picked to be top five. Here they are with a fifth place finish on event one, a third place finish on event two. They did really well. They held their own on event three. And so to be sitting in such a good place against such incredible teams, such super teams after just the first three events, I was really impressed. Yeah, and there's no slouch athletes on there. Nicole Holcomb, Joseph Tortora are both names that I recognize from the old format of the Open Regionals and Nicole Holcomb being in the game. So it's not like they're completely unknown. Yeah. I want to welcome everybody in here at the Alliant Energy Center who's watching us around the venue. Thanks for being with us, and we hope you guys are enjoying all the action and everything that the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games have to offer. Let's go to the men's competition because they are going to be up next for event number two. This is where we stand after one event, and shocking, Matt Fraser is in the lead. He has 100 total points. Chandler Smith sits in second place. Scott Panchik is in third. Bjorn van Gubensen, he sits in fourth place. Jeffrey Adler is in fifth. James Newbury looking for his best career finish at the CrossFit Games. He is in sixth place. A lot of familiar names there. And we have another event awaiting. So we're going to see what that was. Earlier in the day, well, earlier this evening, while the teams were competing, Dave Castro announced event number two for the individuals. We don't have that, but... <laughs> 
We just stare awkwardly at the camera for a second, but here's where it was. It, now we have it. So let's let Dave Castro tell you about it. We're going to switch gears and we're going to do something a little shorter. But we're going to keep the triplet format to make it a balanced event. And we're going to make it a triplet chipper starting with row. The row distance is going to be 800 meters. From that, you're going to progress to 66 push press with two kettlebells. Lightweight, 35 for the men, 24 for the women. One in each arm. After that, after you've done 66 push press, we're going to end with 132 feet of handstand walking. You'll complete the 132 feet, the length of the field, and cross the finish line. That four time is the second cut. Good luck. That's the announcement of event number two. Just a recap for you. It starts with an 800 meter row, then 66 kettlebell push presses, 16 kilos for the men, 12 kilos for the women, and then a handstand walk across the field. So we're going to spike your heart rate, we're going <laughs> to blast your shoulders, and then you're going to have to use those shoulders to get yourself across the finish line. Upside down. Upside down. <laughs> yeah, easy day. What, what's the crux of this event? I mean, for the first, first part of it, you have to manage yourself on the row. You can't go, too, go out too hard. You have to go out fast enough that you can pop off that rower, walk right over to your kettlebells, and start moving on the shoulder to overhead, or the push press specifically, right? And then from there, it's pretty much managing fatigue in your shoulders and being ready for that handstand walk. Yeah, and I actually think that the 66 push press at that light weight is a trap oh, for yeah. a lot of these athletes, right? So it's gonna be how you manage those repetitions so that when you're done, you can pop up on those hands and start moving. Who are you going to be watching to do well in event number two? I've got my eyes on Chandler Smith. Yeah, it looked great in so, event number one. Right, so when we were at the Rogue Invitational, he had that look of, I'm just happy to be here. You know, I'm just happy to throw down with these guys. And the look that he had on his face in event one, I mean, he just looked hungry, like I deserve to be here, mm -hmm. I want to be here, and I'm hunting these guys down. It was so fun to see that kind of a look on his face. So. If he does well in this event that involves a handstand walk, I haven't seen Chandler on his hands walking. We saw him do well mm -hmm. in the deficit uh, parallel push-ups. But if he can do well walking on his hands, I'm really excited for him for the rest of the weekend. And that time of 15.42.77 seconds in event number one, good enough for second place behind Matt Fraser. Who will you be watching? I'm actually going to be watching Pat Bellner. Okay, I, I don't think that he's satisfied with his finish from mm -hmm. this morning. I think it was a good finish, but I think he wants to stay closer to Matt. It's something he knows he needs to do if he's going to have a chance at taking the top of the podium. Some reasons that I like him for this, I know he's solid at rowing. I don't think that those shoulder to overhead are going to be that difficult for him. I think he's going to do a pretty good job of managing that fatigue just from his experience. He's a veteran competitor. And then get him up on his hands, former gymnast. This is a place that he's been before. I'm sure that Michelle has kind of prepped him for something like yeah. this. So I think he's going to be ready. Uh, come out there, look for him on a, as a podium finish on this event. And Pat Veller finished ninth in that first event, only 16 points back right now of Matt Fraser. And as we move through this competition, that deficit can be erased very quickly. Here's what remains for the rest of the day here on the Rogue Iron Game. We have just one event remaining for the men, and then the women will close things off with their event number two. It's called the second cut, and we will call the final heat for the men, and then we will get you set for the women, and then we will take a break, and we will call the final heat for the women, and we will wrap up day number one here, the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games, back out to the CrossFit World Feed. We'll see you in a second as the men get set to take on second cut.